What's going on guys and welcome back to the most spectacular read through of all times I am the big cliche I am big papa pump without the pump I am the rock that is never hard King Kong got a lot on me I am T B R Terabyte Reacts and I will just like to say you're welcome. Welcome back guys to another review of one of the most prolific mangas that has ever been written or drawn, however you want to describe it, the Zerk. We are here once again to indulge in this beautiful artistry and I have to say man I am thoroughly enjoying this as you guys already know we are just going to jump in no long introduction man I just want to see what happens at this battle the battle um, for Doldry I want to see how they conclude this today we're gonna go through about another 10 chapters because we're doing it by volume um, as I give you guys a warning all the time about when you're watching my read-throughs, I might say something in the intro that might not turn out to be true because a lot of times you never know what can happen in the space of doing something for two hours. You know what I'm saying? Like I could get interrupted. I could just end it abruptly. Um, it could be that I don't get through the volume because of think something I have to do and I have to just put Put out <laughs> the freaking freaking something just chipped in and just started making noise in the room. Like, <laughs> this is weird stuff that happened. As I say, stuff happens. Okay, but anyways, um, as I said before, things can happen, and I might cut the read through short. Um, so don't always expect. A volume go in with a moderate expectation I know I'm doing it by volume right now because that's what how I started off so I try to get through a volume um, today we got another 10 chapters to get through but you never know I might cut it off right before we start a new arc or a new battle or whatever in the manga um, so the last three chapters um, the morning departure I'm seeing right here. Yeah, the morning departure um, might and I, I don't know. So I don't want to promise you guys that I'm going to get into that. As I said, it all depends on my mood. Most of the time it does depend on my mood. I'm not going to sit here and make it seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm always going to be up to doing 10 chapters or reading 10 chapters. It could be that my voice gives um you guys gotta also understand i talk for a living <laughs> okay i talk for a living not just on youtube but outside of this i mentor people i do one-on-one -on -one calls with people and i'm talking literally all week also to colleagues and you know and all of this other stuff that i do so basically you know, I could be doing this for two hours straight and, and my I start losing my voice. That's why I try to kind of keep my, you know, I'll have a little drink, water or something. Meanwhile, I'm doing the read through. So be, please, be on, you know, be considerate. <laughs> As I said, don't have too much of a high expectation all the time. You know, if it's excited enough, I will not necessarily force myself, but I will continue um, so I just want you guys to know that. So let's jump into this, man. See what a conclusion of the battle for adultery is as we jump into chapter five. So let's go do that, man. See you guys on the other side. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome to volume eight. Let's do this, man. Battle for adultery. See, we got 10 chapters to get through. So let's get on with the show. Okay. Back here again, we got Griffith and Guts got his sword broken, right? The 
his sword broke against this douchebag that he's fighting. And like, oh, he's done it. It's looking bad. It is looking bad for Guts right now because, oh, he said, I'm screwed. My sword was messed up from fighting those hundred men. I was careless. Damn it. The guy looks and is like, time's up. He almost took your head, though, boy. It's like, Raid, time's up, Raiders captain. What now? Who the hell is this guy? Who is this on top of it? Why does this look like um, Nosferatu? That looks like Nos Nosferatu up on the hill here. It looks like him. I don't know if it's him, but it looks like him. Who is this? Yeah, this guy is in here fighting Casca. After he, uh, um, it looks like she really is hurt. Cause I was thinking that she wasn't hurt, cause she pulled it out immediately. Uh, yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, she did get hurt, but he said he's, he, um, there was poison on the blade, and I was thinking maybe it didn't pierce her skin because of the armor but it does look like she got hurt he's like don't struggle it's useless even if you wish to fight can you even move freely if you obey me and throw down your sword i wouldn't be opposed to letting you live as my own personal toy everybody's like sis like if you refuse ah yeah you know he's a crazy oh snap he jabbed off her her helmet with the spear stab 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 <laughs> stab 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 i hope he's not actually saying that he's such a clown bro he's like oh yeah okay I'm trying to dodge looks like she got cut like trouble if i move around the drug and they're all saying big sis get the hell out of my way Damn it. Casca, you need to get out of this. She's he slices across her. Seems like she dodged it. Oh no, she didn't dodge it. She got knocked over. She ended up on the wall. It's like, what will you do? There's nowhere left to run. She's up against the wall. She's cornered. She is cornered. Look what you've done to your to my face. I think you can expect to lose a limb or two. Then you can take your time deciding whether you'll be a, my captive or die in this place. Let's start below the waist. Like, oh no. So, Casca looks like she saw an opening. Wait a minute, did she, she jams her, her sword into the ground, lifted herself off the ground, and he's like, Nani, what? She lifts herself with the sword, about to flip, oh, she flips over him, come on man, you gotta take the head in the process, Casca. Come on. She's gearing up. He's like, eh, impossible. What she do? What she do? She's behind him. She swings her sword. Did she get him? Yes. She got him across the mouth. <laughs> you were interesting enough, but you're also total swine. Hey. Eh, he got cut right across the mouth. Oh, man, that's savage. It, then she's like, all right, the rest are little fish. Rout them. So we got Guts and uh, um, the general um, out here standing up, and, and he's on his horse still. He's like, on guard. How is he supposed to on guard? He doesn't have any damn sword. 
So he gears up. He charges towards Guts. And they're all like, protect the captain. And he's like, there's nothing you can do, idiots. Get out of there. Damn, this dude is a savage. He's like, nuisances. <laughs> Damn, he's... Yo, my guy sliced through all of them. Yo, he ain't no joke for real, bro. He's not a joke. He took them out. Guts is gritting his teeth. I'm telling you, man, this guy on top of the hill, I'm pretty sure it's Nosferatu. Is I'm pretty sure it's him, man. Thought I heard something outside. Sorry about that. Anyways. So. Wait a minute. Did the person there threw their sword down. They're like, guts. And you're like, she, and he's like, this ain't good. I can't stop his pole axe with a puny knife like this. Oh, they threw him a knife. And he's like, son of a bitch. Oh. The sword arrived. He's like looking around and the sword Drops down the sword that the person threw from on top of the hill. I'm pretty sure that's Nosferatu. If that is not Nosferatu that threw that sword, man, I'm pretty sure it's him from a, it's on top of that hill. And if he's the one looking out for guts, that's big. That is big. He's like, what? Hmm? Everybody's friends is like, guts, take up that sword. That's Griffith. Griffith telling him to take up the sword. He reaches for it. He grabs it. He blocks the attack. Wait a second. Why does Guts have a tail? Can you tell me why the hell? What is this? Wait a minute. Why? Do... What is this? What is this serpent tail or demon tail? That's crazy. I'm pretty sure that's demon tail. It, unless that's hanging off of the, the hilt of the sword or something. Yo, no, am I seeing this right right now? Bruh, he took his head. He took it. Bro, why is it that it seems like nothing is ever a battle? Like the, the, the only person that survived guts was Nesferatu. It's like human beings don't stand a chance against this guy. It's crazy. He took his head. Look at this. Look at this cheese, man. I wish they had brought it down more in the panel. Make it a little bit more visible. But I get what he was trying to portray with the drawing. But I wish it was down a little bit more. It kind of seems like it got... Like the the... That scene like it got cut off at the top. But whatever. Still looking beastly. Anyways. He took. Bro. He took the horse's head too. The horse. The man sliced through everything. The whole, the head. And the freaking. Horse head. Man head. Everything. Everything getting bodied bro. Everything's getting bodied. This is crazy. Everything getting bodied. Anyways, I don't want to talk too loud. If I'm clipping, guys, if I'm clipping as in if I'm too loud because I have had to readjust my mic for other, rea other reactions, so I didn't change the settings. But if I'm too loud, let me know, okay? If I'm too loud, please let me know so I'll change it for the next read-through, okay? But I'm going to keep it there. I don't think I'm clipping, but I'll re-listen to the audio because if it's too much, like it seems like I'm screaming. Because I know I'm, I'm going to clip. I clip whenever I whenever I scream anyways because the mic is like right there. You know what I mean? So, so everybody's like frightened. They just saw what just happened. Griffith is looking. And that sword. I know everybody going to be wondering where did that sword come from. So, the body dropped. 
body, the horse's body. <laughs> Yo, and they're all looking. And they're like, the, the, the bastard did it. And they're like, that can't be. The unbeatable Sir Boscone. The general was said to be the mightiest knight in all of Tudor. So this pedophile guy over here. <laughs> this, the, it, it likes his little boys. Like, girl, the, that useless Boscone. You fools, the general's defeat doesn't affect our military superiority. Superiority. Why are you faltering? And they're like, Governor, look. At what? <laughs> oh, they, they're like, hear the cries over there. Okay, so the castle has been taken. <laughs> the castle has been taken, man. You might as well surrender. You ain't got no home to go back to. <laughs> the plan worked. <laughs> Anyways, next chapter, please. And he's like, right, and he's like... It, is that it can't be yep castle has been taken the battle of daldry chapter six let's get it okay good job casca good job great job taking over the the castle they said they said it couldn't be done and y'all did it so what is going to be the aftermath now what is going to be the aftermath y'all didn't trust that griffith could come up with a good enough plan to do it to do it so they're like, the enemy's st standard, but how? What happened? And, he, and Guts is screaming at them, don't you fools get it yet? Your leader is dead. It's plain as day the fortress has fallen. It means you all lost. We, we, we lost? Have we really lost? Yes, you lost. <laughs> Cry out! Cry for victory! In, in Griffith voice. <laughs> like, no, 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 no way. <laughs> so, Griffith is smiling. And now we're going to finish finish off the rest of these dudes. Why don't they just surrender? You know, they're like, commit. And Griffith is like, commence hunting down the enemy remnants. What is left of them? If they flee... This place, well enough, slaughter every last one who offers opposition. It's no use. At, the, at, at this rate, we, we, we'll be killed, you think? <laughs> and then this dude is still telling them to fight. He's like, morons, who told you to retreat? I am your supreme commander. Turn around and come back. I'm still here. <laughs> Yo, bro, all of them is dipping on you right now. He fell off his horse. Ah, oh, poor thing. I hope somebody takes... I hope Griffith cuts your head off. <laughs> he, he, he fell off his horse. And now Griffith is standing over him. Are you going to kill him, Griffith? G G Griffith. Like, it's been quite some time, Lord Ganon. <laughs> uh -huh. G Griffith, my old friend, could you find some way to overlook this? You you and I have been good to each other. To betray that over the unfortunate matter of us being enemies now. I've been searching for you ever since that day, and I've waited eagerly for that day ch chance would allow us to meet again like this. Have you any idea how much of my personal means has been spent thus? And that's what you care about? Your personal... <laughs> you know, I made sure that none of my men would by any means even so much as wound you in this battle. I took great pains to see it through. Surely you haven't forgotten that night we had together. It was just one night, but oh, how I've yearned for that again. Won't you grant the wish of the one who shared it with you? Uh, you, you don't, you, you don't resent me, do you? And Griffith replies, I do not resent you, Excellency. What? He's calling him Excellency. 
What? I think he's going to kill him, though. Oh, oh, then. He's about to say something. Griffith stops and is like, however, it would be quite beyond reason to say that I yearn for you. I simply have no emotional interest in you at all. You were like a stone lying by the side of the path I walk. Damn! The savageness is like resentment, endearment. I should have read this before, but let me read the whole thing again. I simply have no emotional interest in you at all. Resentment, endearment, nothing. I just took the liberty of using you when the opportunity appeared. You were like a stone lying by the side of the path I walk. That and nothing more. And he's like, you, you bastard. And then we have the scene. It looked like he pointing a sword at him. Although, having your loose tongue spread petty rumors about me would prove slightly inconvenient. What did he do? Damn, he took his eye? Did he? Hold on a sec. He killed him. <laughs> I didn't even realize that the sword. Hold on a sec. I didn't even realize that the sword went went through his head, bro. Like he just, it kind of looked like he just pointed it at him. Because there's no penetration, so you don't really see it. But he killed him. Poked him in the eye. Right through the brain. Let's get it. It's a possibility he's not dead, though. That's the thing. There is a possibility that he's not dead, so I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna keep my eye out for this dude in the future because I don't think he's dead. Because you know what I'm saying, like they making it seem like he is, but you know what I'm saying. And don't confirm it for me because I wanna. I, I wanna maybe later on I'll, you know what I'm saying. I'll be like, okay, I guess he's dead. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep my eye out for this dude because. That's not necessarily um, a life-ending wound. Because you can get poked in the eye with a sword and still live with a knife and still live. So it's not necessarily a life-ending blow. You get what I'm saying? So you, it can kill you, but you can, also, you can also survive it if you understand what I'm saying. Right? So... I'm going to keep my eye out for that guy. Anyways, so, looks like things are just about wrapped up. The enemy all scattered and ran. I can't believe it worked out this well. Yay, we really stuck it to him. Good. No pun intended. <laughs> are you okay, sis? Yeah, I'm feeling a little better. You guys need to get her some medicine. And she's like, don't mind me. You guys go see if any enemies remain in the fortress. Yes, ma'am. Hey, come on. Work time. Okay, so. Gus got a new sword. You don't know where it come from. And I'm telling you. I'm telling you guys. That had to be Nosferatu. I'm calling it right now. That guy is Nosferatu, man. I remember that image. He's like, yo, tough day. And he's like, what's wrong? Uh, it's just a scratch. It's not just a scratch. The thing had poison on it. I said, or that's what I'd like to say. Could you give me a hand so Guts picks her up? I think, I, I, I really do think that their relationship is much better. As I said, I'm not, I'm not going to ship them yet. I'm not going to ship them yet because I like their relationship as it is right now and i i don't know i don't know if slowly casca is like falling for him i don't know but she seems to to care for him as much as she cares for griffith at this point so for her to be even asking him for help knowing you know the things that have happened in the past and how she's treated gus in the past and to know from their you know time that they spent together alone and stuff like that like it seems like her attitude towards him has changed dramatically from the from the last battle to this battle 
You know what I mean? So, good stuff, man. So, he helps her up. They're looking out at their victory. Everybody is screaming out. So, she's like, breathtaking. It's like, hey, is she crying? I think she's crying. Yeah, she's crying. Okay, so, it's strange. Actually, I always think this when the battle is over and Griffith is surrounded by everyone cheering in victory, that he's somehow out of reach, that he exists somewhere far away, and it hurts. That ain't the case. Eh? So... Hold on, what did he do? He did something with the sword. Did he drop it? I think he dropped the sword. And held her shoulder. Uh oh! He dropped the sword, held her shoulder like he's hugging her back. And she's like, yo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> yo! My guy guts with the moves, homie! I'm officially shipping this couple now. You know. <laughs> I'm officially shipping this couple now. I want to hear y'all in the comment section, okay? Casca and Guts. We got some cuts around here. <laughs> All right. Let's get it, man. I like it. Smooth. That move was smooth. <laughs> Anyways. So she's like, hey. So she, so he's like, you'll never get anywhere just standing here watching him. Let's go. Go to meet your leader. <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> As she smiles, she's like, yeah. So he takes off running. Um, like, whoop, is what? T stop that. It's like, so he looks back at the sword. And he's like, couldn't be. I think he suspects that it's... Because was this the same sword that Nosferatu was using? Because I don't remember exactly the, the sword that he was using. But I would have to go back and look to see if it's the same sword. Because maybe that's what he's reminiscing about right now. Maybe that's what he's reminded of. Because he looks at the sword and he's like, it couldn't be. So I know it's, it's got to be him, man. Yes! Yes! That's what I'm saying, man. But why? <laughs> but why? Why would Nesferatu help Guts? Like, that's another thing, too. Why would Nesferatu help Guts? Please. Ah. Uh, do not answer that. In the comment section. I know you guys are eager to answer these questions for me. But it's just the thoughts that are happening in my mind. I have to say them out loud. So you guys can understand how I'm feeling right now. Right? It is him, man. Because I was like, it's the same image. The same hairstyle. Everything that I saw in that silhouette. And I was like, that's Nesferatu, man. The boss. The man, of pro the man with the prophecy, I mean. Not the man of prophecy. <laughs> okay, so we got confirmed Nosferatu. He's thinking up here. Okay. He said the eclipse will soon come and the demon advent approaches. Okay, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but it sounds dreary. Okay, so next chapter. Triumphant return. Okay. So now they're back now and they're like, Griffith has done very well for himself these years since he appeared in Midland. I'm guessing this is a time skip. Or maybe this is the same. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's that for himself these years since he appeared in Midland. His ambition is outrageous. Heedless of his own social standing, unparalleled impudence. Doldry has fallen. 
The war which has gone on so long will end for now. It's certain that he will try to assert himself even within our kingdom's government. How could some upstart knight who knows nothing but combat be able to govern anything? But his popularity amongst the people these days is tremendous. Even his majesty seems to have an extreme amount of confidence in him. Yes, because the thing about it is that the man, he, he came in, did something that y'all been trying to do for years, probably decades, okay? And he came in and did it basically in a day. <laughs> to be honest, like the, he literally went there one day with one plan and did it in one try. So brilliant i you know what i'm saying so they just always the, the thing about it is this when it comes on to war when it comes on to battle you have to have tactics you have to have tactics you gotta outsmart the enemy it's not just about um it's not just about hey you have an army i have an army let's see who, who's the last man standing when it goes to that plane you're gonna have issues you're gonna have problems you're going to lose too many people. You got to have a plan. You know what I'm saying? Which which what they did was a brilliant plan. You know what I'm saying? F figure out a way to pull them out of the castle. Because that's their stronghold. Right? If they're stupid enough. And it's really not. The dude that got killed. It's not the general's fault. You know what I'm saying? It's not the general's fault. To be honest, is it's not his fault because he was against the whole plan of sending everybody. It's the commander that came out and be like, "What are you waiting on? Send everybody to go kill them all." Blah blah blah. So it's really not the general's fault, and he he lost his life because of it. But at the same time, he was a smart general. If he wasn't, if he had refused to follow the commander's orders, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he would still be alive, and maybe they still would have had the stronghold. But they don't have it anymore. And it's because of the commander coming out because, oh, I got to get my hands on Griffith again. You know, so, but anyways, let's continue. So, according to information I have obtained, due to the Band of the Hawks' success in capturing Doldry, His Majesty plans to grant Griffith the position of general. I could see that happening. That's not so far-fetched at all. So they're like, indeed, his majesty will also grant the white title, the supreme rank of the Midland army, shared by the white tigers and white dragons to him and his band. Well deserved, I would say. And they're like, L ludicrous. Is that credible, minister? Is that, I is that credible, minister? And they're like, yes, it is from a reliable source. Hold on. Who are they talking to? And they're like, how could this be? In that case, his political authority will inevitably see substantial growth. Yes. This means, after all, that he is a bit too bereft of discretion to survive within the castle. Oh, yeah. Virus 2.0. But, Minister Foss, by what means shall we and they're like okay let's continue but minister foss by what means shall we oh is that and anti -aris. so they're gonna try to poison griffith typical an instantly deadly poison we will put this in his goblet while he enjoys the victory celebration and they're saying, but is this really safe? What if the off chance our scheme comes to light? You needn't worry. Even if a mistake is made, such a thing would never happen. First off, we will not have any direct involvement. But have no fear. Oh, the queen is going to help. This bitch ass queen. <laughs> the queen is going to help. Even if what you suggest were to happen, I would see it settled privately. I promise it, says the queen. 
And like, oh my, with an assurance such as that from the queen, we have nothing to fear. Take heed, all of you, while this plot will ensure hereafter. But what is this to the queen? Why is the queen so opposed to this? She has, she, uh, you know what I mean? Like, this doesn't even threaten her position. So, you know what I'm saying? She just don't like commoners. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, this prejudice is serious, man. Anyways, like, take heed, all of you. While this plot will ensure hereafter that the security of your social standards will no longer be threatened by this man, it also exists in order to pluck this parasite who would eventually infect even the rule of our kingdom from the lion's body before the disease spreads. I am not about to allow the long and glorious history of Midland's rule to be trampled upon by this lowly commoner from who knows where, for the sake of the kingdom and for all that is just. Naturally, you are correct. We too value patriotism above all. I was aware of the confidential information that the Queen and General Julius, this is General Foss talking, I was aware of the confidential information that the Queen and General Julius were involved in a love affair unbeknownst to His Majesty. Oh, really? You're kidding me. It was wise of me to plant the idea that General Julius' death was a plot designed by Griffith, but to think that she would go so far as to volunteer to lead this plan So she and General Julius was getting it on. Okay. So that's why she's... So the king ain't somebody... Been, your brother been poking your wife, homie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that ain't cool, but... You know what I said? It was like, his majesty made a good king, but not a good husband. The burden of ruling the kingdom must weigh heavily upon him. Therefore, as one man... He had no time to give to his family. No, perhaps that was an escape from sorrow over the death of the former queen. Said to be the one and only woman he loved. Oh, so he just married for marriage sake. I have in the same way publicly, faithfully fulfilled my role as his majesty's queen these ten odd years. As all had hope. Under the guise of a political marriage, I conveniently entered this kingdom as the Queen of Midland rather than the king's wife. That has been my deposition towards my weak, loving husband. The reason I would give my body to him was not love. These stone walls and marble floors were too cold for me to endure. As a lone as a lone woman in an unknown foreign land. More than love, I wanted to succumb to a simple burning desire. But now that it's lost, I first understand just how much I resided within the warmth of the skin of that man with whom I shared no emotion. I was in love. I loved him. I will never forgive you, Griffith. Not as the Queen of Midland, but as a woman, will I take my revenge? <laughs> Ain't no fury like a woman scorned. <laughs> Anyways, she loved Julius. Now she wants revenge on Griffith. Now then, everyone. As evidence of our patriotism and mutual confidence, if you would seal this blood oath, Okay, so Griffith, they come, come back to the city. The people are cheering. They're like, oh, wow, were there this many people in Windham? This dude doing the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> He's doing the Hulk Hogan for real. They're like, ah, stop that. Miss Casca, look this way, miss. Uh, Casca's like, give me a break. It's the Raiders. There's Captain Guts. I heard the beat. 
I heard he beat General Buscone. He's the mightiest warrior in the hawk. This is amazing. I've never seen a welcome this big for a victory. <laughs> Captain. Eh? Why don't you try waving once, Captain? You're the hero this time after all. What's the matter? You're spacing out and you look upset. Like, nah, it's nothing. You know, nobody even imagined all this three years ago. How true that is. And he remembers when Griffith told him, I will get my own kingdom. And he's saying, absolutely incredible. Oh, here he comes. Your Highness, come quick. My Lord Griffith is so popular. The women are making such a fuss. Well then, that's getting a bit too familiar with him, I'd say. Please keep still, your highness, your dress. Oh, hurry up. Tell me, does this look strange? No, it becomes you. This is your fifth dress now, highness. Hurry, hurry, he's passing by. She wants to go see Griffith, man. Jesus. She's like, the princess cheered up so suddenly, and yet she's hardly had any appetite since the band of the hawk was deployed. Yeah, because she's... Definitely, she wants some of that Griffith D. So, <laughs> she go do what she needs. Like, so she cries out, Lord Griffith. And I don't think he heard her. It's like, oh, poo. It's impossible amidst all this noise. Please wait until the victory ball. And she sighs. Okay, so... The queen is standing up there, and she asks, how goes the plan? And they reply, all is in place, majesty. If everything goes well, we should all hold a banquet, a banquet in memoriam of him. It's so funny sometimes when people are planning other people's funerals. <laughs> planning other people's funeral before they're actually dead. That's so creepy. Anyways, it's an irony. The white hawk of the battlefield will meet his death within the stone walls of this bird cage. Although he gets to die on the best day of his life, that at least is merciful. Minister Foss, what is it? This was addressed to you, sir. A letter from whom, pray tell? It was simply passed on to me by the lady of the court. The sender is unknown. So, Minister Fats reads the letter, and he looks stunned. He's like, something happened. What is it? They're like, what, what, what? And they're like, what is it, Minister Foss? And he's like, uh, uh, no, it is nothing at all, but you're sweating like a pig. Jesus. Like, my apologies, but a small matter has arisen, so I must excuse myself until later. And then the queen has a confused look in her face and he's General Foss General Foss. Minister Foss is walking away and saying to himself, Why? How? How did this happen? You bastard, you bastard Triumphant return. Okay. Okay, so we're at look like they're in the ballroom now. Right. Oh look, look, it's Lord Griffith. A troop from the band of the hawk. They were the leads in this victory. They're Midland's guardian deities. Wow, they all they gotten all dressed up. Even Guts is dressed up. Wow. Never expected that. <laughs> ah, so this is where all the tax money from the masses ends up. <laughs> talk, talk about showy. This is so embarrassing. Come on, stick your chest out. They know if you ain't sure of yourself. You know what, though? It feels like we finally made it here. But you're right, we really have to be standing here in the kind of place I've only heard of in fairy tales. It's like I'm dreaming or something. If I hadn't met up with the Hawks with Griffith, I never would have even thought of, dream, of a dream like this. Being in a big castle, 
hall surrounded by nobility. Yeah, you said it. So that Guts is thinking about something. He's looking at Griffith. So they all, you know, the girls are going to try to maul him, of course. Like, Lord Griffith, welcome home. Thank goodness you're safe. I was so worried. They say the band of the hawk was actively involved again. Do tell more. Would you dance with me later on? Me as well, please. <laughs> Aren't tales of battle rather barbaric and boring for ladies? Not at all. They're stimulating. <laughs> and they're like, he's a natural. Amazing. Mm, send at least one this way. <laughs> and they're like, you're the band of the Hawks commanders. We want to hear your war stories. You must be very strong. Well, you're right, actually. You know, this guy is like, he's like, he's like the virgin in the group. <laughs> They're like, you're the one, aren't you? The captain of the Raiders who beat General Bascone in single combat? And Guts is like, y yeah. <laughs> wow. And General Buscone was world-renowned for being such a hero. I heard you also defeated a hundred enemies by yourself. You really did that? Unbelievable. Are you the strongest in the band of the Hawk? I wonder who is the stronger, him or Lord Griffith? <laughs> and he's like, you guys, take it from here. Yeah, leave it to us. <laughs> That's selfish guts. Amazing muscles. <laughs> the girls are all over these guys. Let me touch, let me touch. Well, I'm the one who taught him the sword, you see. <laughs> oh, damn. It's like that, besides he's a fag anyways. <laughs> it's like that, homie? For real? All right, so. They're all around Griffith. They're all mad, like, isn't he festive? That's inner aggression, if I've ever seen it. Yes. But I don't suppose the generals can fail to recognize the truth. The band of the hawks merit. With ease, they answer the prayer our kingdom has held there for the past hundred years. You did well to speak up for him. Excellent foresight, Sir Laban. I would stake out a share myself. Those are the words of some minister of state, Sir Owen. But henceforth, that just may be necessary. The war will end. Would it be that the peace which will follow lasts for time immemorial? But for better or worse, in a world of peace, warriors like us who live by the sword must also find a means of survival within this resplendent castle. And ironically enough, the same can be said of the very man who brought about that peace. He is too conspicuous to proceed peacefully and uneventfully inside the castle. The more radiant the light, the darker the shadows fall. Well, that's a cool saying. I like that. Give me a freaking break. What the hell is this for? Who's talking here? Guts? What the hell is this for? I guess he's talking about the party. So, he goes over there. He, he's looking, staring at Casca. <laughs> so, Casca marches over there and grabs him. Like, oh, come here. And he's like, wait, what the? He's like, play along. <laughs> like, pushy broad. <laughs> But you like it. Stop acting like you don't like it. You know, Casca is the one. Let's let's stop with the pretending. Okay? We know you like Casca. Okay? And they're like, they refuse to leave me alone. Pretend you're with me for a bit. So, oh, yeah, because all the guys are like all over her and stuff. I swear, when it comes to those aristocrat prodigal sons, a female warrior must be a rarity. Treating me like I'm some exotic beast. <laughs> T 
she's like, what's, what's with you? <laughs> she elbows him in the chin. It's like, I didn't know you were into, oh God, he bit his tongue. That is not going to, <laughs> that is not going to feel good. Like normal women don't use their elbows. <laughs> Come on, this is embarrassing. So she drags him again. It's your fault, you know. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like one of them spot, spot the two of them over there, okay. So they're outside now. It's like so she's, <laughs> she's like, Whew, I'm no good at this. I'm much more comfortable swinging a sword. God says you said it. Uh, what the heck happened to you though? What made Big Sis Casca, the demon, go fluttering around like this? It's like cut the demon. I only dress like a man because it's easier to move around. It's not like I do it for kicks. But I guess I shouldn't try things I'm not used to. Revealing clothes like this make me feel I'll catch a cold. Thinking about it, it's been years since I last wore a skirt and I'm so much more muscular now. She asked him, does it look work weird, you think? And Guts replies, nah, not a bit. You look pretty good. Really? Yeah, you look a lot better than those noble girls flocking around Griffith. How about it? Why not ask him for a dance? No, no way, I couldn't. I've only ever danced at my village festival when I was a child. I'd probably step on his feet. God Guts does like her. I don't know if she's still caught up with Griffith because I really do think that she is like she's she likes Guts. But I think she likes them both. Um and I think it's gonna take Guts a while to kind of realize that she likes him back because she he's kinda like in some ways we we do do this like i'm a hopeless romantic and i've done this in the past where i like a girl that likes somebody else that i'm close to and i can't tell her that because i know she likes my friend i know she likes my friend but i can't tell her i like her because out of respect for her feelings you know you know what i mean it's kind of like the situation that happened with between naruto sakura and sasuke it's kind of like naruto like Sakura would do anything for her, but he also recognizes and knows that no matter what he does, he's never going to win her affection. He can go out there and save her life. Um, as in, if you want a perfect example of what happened, you know, after, you know, the interruption of the tuning exams in part one, um, when Naruto basically saved them from Gara, saved Sakura. Sakura is where he. You, the whole premise, the, everything that he did was to save Sakura um, from Gar's grip because Sa Sasuke was out of commission and he did all of that. Um, and she still thought it was Sasuke that did all the rescuing. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you can see the disappointment. I remember when Tsunade came back to the village. When Tsunade came back to the village, after they went and looked for her to become the fifth, she came back to the village and when they were in the room when she was looking at Sasuke and she woke him up and stuff like that because he was out of commission and Naruto basically was in the room and when Sasuke woke up Sakura was all over him and you could see the disappointment on it's like somebody stabbed Naruto in the heart man his face <laughs> His face, bro. I know I'm laughing now, but it was a very sad moment because I could relate because I've seen that happen. That has happened to me in the past, and it's not a fun feeling, man. And that's why, as I got older, I know I've become a little bit more colder when it comes on to women because I realize that women, a lot of times, they want what they want, and a lot of times, the people that you know would treat them the best, and you know what I'm saying, and you know, I don't want to say, but, you know, the, the people that will treat them the best and it's probably the one 
because you never can really know who's gonna be that one person that's gonna that's gonna really be there for you through everything you know what i'm saying because people change over time but you know what i'm saying i know you guys get what i'm trying to get at because it's it's tough it's tough for you to be that that one person that you know you would treat this person better but they're going after the one guy that you know has his ways you know for a fact that this guy would would not be any good but you can't say nothing because you know what i'm saying then you just can come off bitter like a cock blocker you don't want to be that person so you just keep your mouth shut and kind of you push the person away into that person's arm in certain instances so i think it's the same thing that's happening here with gus because it's obviously he likes casca but at the same time he knows casca loves griff likes griffith i don't want to say love but he knows that she likes him so she, he's going to try to kind of push them together to see you know because in cer in certain ways too guts wants to make sure that casca is happy so that too so says that but what happened that changed your attitude you've never shown your face in a place like this and that's casca talking to guts that's like i thought i'd see it for myself and like huh Everything Griffith, my, Griffith, myself, and everyone else has done. These past three years since I met you all. All the things he's managed to get so far and all he's going to try to get from here on out. I thought I'd come see it with my own eyes. So now we kind of understand, you know, why he's here. or Why he decided to dress up and come. So it's like, guts. So... You're really serious. Like, no matter what. So, the, the king comes out. They're like, long live his majesty, the king. Like, the sponsors appear. And God send her. Like, you go on ahead. I'm going to enjoy the ear a bit more. Can't stand listening to the king drone on. And she says, don't be long. You got it. Like, hang on. Eh? Nah, never mind. She looks at him. And he's thinking, there's one more reason I showed up tonight. She and the rest of the Hawks don't have a clue what's in the works tonight. Ain't that a little cruel, Griffith? What is Griffith? What does Griffith have planned? what first and f so the king is talking now so first and foremost we have good news for all of you a short while ago a special envoy from Tudor brought word that an armistice agreement with our kingdom has been signed we thank from our hearts all those who have endured this lengthy time of trial along with us there are more than a few who speak out in opposition to this armistice. Hatred of Truder among those who have lost friends and loved ones to the war has no doubt persisted for three generations. We sincerely sympathize with them. However, the rebuilding of our wearied kingdom is far more urgent. Hereafter, we must focus that strength towards our kingdom's prosperity. As you all know, the Band of the Hawk, led by Count Griffith, demonstrated exceedingly great merit leading to this armistice. The recapture of territory has been our kingdom's most fervent prayer since the days of Two Kings' Prayer. They're always talking about us. It has continued to be said these hundred years that the capture of Dolji was impossible, but with their bold, unique brand of valor, they have finally accomplished it. This is a bit hasty of us, but it is a time for celebration, and thus we shall inform all of you. Casca trying to get through. Excuse me, please let me through. At the military award ceremony two days hence, we plan to present Count Griffith and the Band of the Hawk with the Midland Army's highest ennoblement, the White Title. 
perhaps appropriately as the White Phoenix General Griffith and the White Phoenix Knights. Also, we shall be knight all of the Band of the Hawks, current unit commanders without exception, and raise them to the peerage. They're like, the White Phoenix General? He said the White Phoenix Knights? Fantastic. That's wonderful. White Phoenix General Griffith. And they're like, I don't believe it. We're going to be nobles? Hmm. You know how many people are not going to like that? Okay, so they both look at each other and smile. Okay, moment of glory and next chapter. The White Phoenix Knights. White Phoenix General Griffith. Tombstone of Flame. Chapter 1. So they're all like gathering around Griffith. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. This... This, this has become extraordinary. And the queen is thinking, your life will end soon enough. Intoxicate yourself with your delusions of grandeur while you still can. And they're all thinking. And they're like, it's about that time, Minister Foss. Whatever it is, the matter. You don't look like you feel well, huh? That isn't like you. Certainly you aren't afraid now. Please pull yourself together. And General Foss responds, No, it's not that. I think he got word, maybe. Something. I don't know. He got word of something. Okay, so they put the poison in the cup to give to Griffith. Griffith, and he says, Here you are, sir. Griffith says, Thank you. He takes the cup. They're all watching. Now then, to the birth of our new young, young new heroes, and to the shining future of Midland. They're like, let me through. Kasuke's trying to get to Griffith, I think. Can't get to him. It's like, a toast! Griffith! He's about to drink it. Oh, this is not good. Oh, he he dropped it on the floor? Or did somebody knock it out of his hand? So he likes drop the glass. Oh, wait! It, yo! Wait a second. Ain't no poison work that fast, bruh. The dude took a sip. It's, it literally took effect in a second. He falls on the ground. Bro. Gr Griffith. Griffith. You know, Costco with her, <laughs> her famous cry. Griffith. <laughs> Griffith. <laughs> Anyways. They're like, Highness. Charlotte. Guards. Seal the hall. Don't let anyone out. Okay. Casca picks up Griffith. She's crying, of course. Okay, we'll continue down. Now, who is this? Who is riding out? All right, hold on a second. So somebody's riding off on a horse. They're like, hey, hey, that was easy. I just made more money than commoners like us who could get from 10 years of honest work. This means farewell to that boring dishwashing job. I just need to get away from the city tonight. Hmm? No? Your boy Griffith is out here waiting on that eight. Not Griffith. Guts. I'm pretty sure this is Guts. Dressed up like a damn cowboy. <laughs> and he slices. R Took his head. Took his head, of course. Who is this guy? Is this is this Guts? I don't want to say, I don't know if it's, got, it's got to be him though. It's got to be him. Even though we didn't see him leave, it's got to be him. Yeah, it's got to be Guts. So, I think, because if Guts, if, if Guts, if they knew about the plan, 
I think maybe the letter that he got was was Jet, um, Minister Foss got a letter. So I'm guessing the letter that he got was a letter that was probably telling him, hey, we know about your plan, so this is what we're going to do. Okay? So he's probably going along with that. So I never expected things to proceed so well. It seemed too easy. Everything went according to Minister Foss's arrangement. Your skills are most impressive. No, not at all. And he's like, yes, it was impressive, Minister Foss, says the queen. And he's like, ah, I am grateful. But he's sweating. There's something wrong. He is sweating buckets because something is wrong. It's either, it's either they, they around this table is going to get killed or they went through with it and said, listen, we, we are going to expose all of these people or something of the sort. But let's read on and see what happens. And he's like, what's wrong? Your face is pale. Minister Foss says, ah, oh, it, it must be your imagination, a trick of the candlelight. But we really are safe, yes? What of the slim chance that server is caught and speaks of it? Our names will be made public. You needn't worry over that point. A little while ago, a report came in from one of my subordinates that he had been, that he had been disposed of. Oh, then you've taken care of all the loose hens. What a tactician. The minister was overqualified for this. Well, then, I shall go check on the pandemonium. So, he's still sweating buckets. Now, our Midland army can finally regain its former dignity. Sure enough, a common-born white phoenix general, outrageous, outrageous. Low-ranking soldiers mustn't be allowed such arrogance. It nearly made it for a heinous precedent. The center of government in this kingdom must always be reserved for those of us from dignified bloodlines. And yet that man of humble origins tried to, what, tried to, what do the people know about ruling a kingdom? We almost became the laughing stock of the world. Now that it's now that it's done, I thank you all for your support. Now it's the queen talking. Thanking us, this was all made possible by Her Majesty's backing. And she's like, hmm, with this, he can rest in peace. And we see smoke. What is that, smoke coming up from the floorboards? Something is coming up from the floorboards. And they're like, what the, what's this smoke? Something's being pushed against the door on the outside, and it won't budge. Yep, lock your asses in there. They're going to smoke y'all out, kill y'all. They're like, move aside. He's trying to open the door. <laughs> yep, y'all are dead. They're like, e fire, what is this? They're trying to take care, take y'all out. Damn, the whole place is on fire. Why? And they're like, what? what's the meaning of this? And then he's, oh, he sees Griffith. Griffith. That's Griffith down there looking at the queen. Like, I know you tried to kill me, bitch. <laughs> Tombstone of Flame, chapter one, the end. And you're like, Griffith. <laughs> He lets his hair back down. <laughs> this is crazy. The queen is up there. Griffin don't play no games. You try to kill me? And they're like, how? The doctors were sure you were dead. And he's like, I'm sure it seemed that way. That's how I arranged it. It was not poison that passed my lips. It was a nostrum. A hyacemus based mixture that. Seamus? 
that put me in a temporary stasis close to death. I was like, that thing took, ain't no poison. I don't know no poison. Not even snake venom can induce a poison that quick. I'm literally seconds knock you out. You guys going to have to let me know in the comment section if, if there's such a poison that exists in any world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to let me know if that exists in the real world. Because I don't think po poisons don't work that quickly. Like, over time, yeah. You have you have poisons that can work in minutes. But I'm, you're talking about, like, he put the, the thing to his lips and he fell over. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I don't think he had time to even swallow the damn thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, he said, naturally, if I had taken a fatal dose, I would really would have died. But it was worth the risk. Thanks to it, I was able to deal with all of you at once. <laughs> nah. She's like, S spare me. I was simply called upon by Her Majesty and Minister Foss. I had no direct involvement in it. Silence, you fool. It's like, in any case, it seems all of you are too accustomed to scheming over things from behind your desk. This is war. There are no spectator seats on the battlefield. And the queen is like, damn you, damn you, Griffith. So you mean to kill me, just like you killed Julius. A mere commoner like you is going to burn me? The Queen of Midland to death? I won't allow it. I won't acknowledge it. Those who die on the battlefield are not the royalty, nobility, or commoners. They are the defeated who die. <laughs> uh, she's burning. They're burning alive now. And Griffith walks away like a boss. Okay. That's what Minister Foss was worried about. And he's like, it is over. Now I own you. <laughs> is such a thing so rare within the court? What's the matter? A man of your cal caliber trembling. Are you frightened because you betrayed your comrades? Or is it because you took part in the assassination of a queen? He's like, I, I want to ask you one thing. How did you come to know about our plan? He's like, I didn't know about it. Then, then why me? But you were different, Minister Foss. I had predicted you would become my enemy ever since that morning I deployed. You caught sight of my eyes then. That time, I knew from that time that you would never permit my existence. And he's like, how? At that instance, your eyes betrayed your fear. That's crazy. When a man is faced with something he truly fears, he cannot ignore it. He has only two options. He can become subordinate and fall under its wing, or he can strike it out and erase the fear. I have long known that there were more than a few amongst the conservatives in court who did not think well of me, but I wasn't able to determine specifically who they were. But someone as shrewd as you was certain to round him up and go about trying to remove me. Though still, that the queen herself would play a part was unforeseen. How could this be? And he replies, how could this be? Just from our eyes meeting for that instant? Have I been dancing to this man's tune ever since then? Yes, the reason I can't stop trembling isn't because I betrayed my comrades, nor was it that I was an accomplice to the queen's murder. It's him. It's that this man is dreadful. Damn, he falls on his knees. Looks like Griffith is about to hand him something. Okay, so he took takes something out of his pocket. 
There is no longer any need for this blood oath. I confiscated. And he tears it up. With our mutual future in mind, let's not allow some silly enmity to linger between us. So he's trying to friend Minister Foss, which I think would, I mean, he could be an asset because, you know, <laughs> he could be an asset, There's, you know, in certain ways in the kingdom, you know. I hope we can be amicable henceforth. How? How? When he's done so much. Can he smile innocently that way? Come this way, minister. I will return to you what I promised. Damn! Dude, he had his daughter? Bruh! It's like, at least... He had his daughter, my guy. Yo, savage. Anyways, say, at least you're safe. You don't need to worry now, father. <laughs> the call it an emotional reunion, eh? I was like, but this was one tough job. Mm, we had to stake out the kid's lesson schedule for a week, then wait for her to leave in a carriage. Though you were the one who made the arrangement, sir, of course, as promised, we were courteous with her. We didn't give her a single spanking, even if she screamed and cried. Who? What is? Good work. Here's the rest of your reward. This dude has been planning this thing for a week. A whole damn week. Yo. Oh. Wow, so much. If you need anything else done, please call on us. We would very much like to continue dealing with you for a long time, sir. We'll be on our way then. <laughs> that was simple. Not to mention profitable. Hope he hires us again. What is this weird ass image up here? Come on, if he tries to cut ties with us, we'll just use this kidnapping against them. Oh! <laughs> is Guts about to take him out? Guts is gonna kill these zoos. They're like, who? who's there? Who the hell are you? No loose ends, bruh. <laughs> take the money back, too. <laughs> like, look. Looks like it's over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That takes care of it. All of it. To think they threw their lives away for Trump change. Well, I guess it beats a soldier's meager wage. Leave it there. The money's theirs by right. They did the work to earn it. Leave it with them. Money is the key to all doors. <laughs> Guts is like, hell of a waste. Is it safe to let the little ball guy go? He says, yeah, I think he's learned today's lesson. I can't predict the future, but probably. What do you mean probably? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But you know, the castle's going to be upset again by all this. This one night, seeing a mountain of corpses with the queen on top. Thankfully, not one person who could name you is still around. I doubt anyone would ever suspect someone who nearly died pulling it off. Does it seem cruel? I involved you in this filthy scheme, and I didn't even get my hands dirty. Do you think... That I'm cruel. I don't know what the hell is that. I don't know. What is this? I don't know what this is. Do you think that I'm cruel? I left all the dangerous tax and work to you. Idiot. What kind of question is that for the guy who killed a hundred men? <laughs> oh, man. Ain't this part of the path to your dream? 
You believe that, don't you? So what's this crap now of all times? And Griffith responds, you're right. <laughs> ah, he slaps, he slaps him on the back. <laughs> He's like, let's head back. Dead men can't walk around. You gotta get back quick so Casca and the others stop worrying. You were dead, so you probably don't know, eh? Casca showed up at a celebration wearing a dress. Really? It's quite a sight to see. Okay. One snowy night. Griffith! So they return to the party. Casca jumps at him. Al finds out he's okay. Casca is crying, of course. Griffith says, I must have really worried you, Casca. It was terrible. Casca hasn't been herself ever since you fainted. Griffith, sorry. He says, this dress looks good on you. With guts looking onwards and then he walks away several days later the queen's royal funeral was held in a splendid yet solemn manner the enigmatic deaths of the queen and the conservative ministers along with the attempted assassination of count griffith on the same night fell into the realm of whispered rumor it was said that it had been the work of Trudor a tutor, hardliners, or possibly an assassin from a third country. Seeking to obstruct the Midland Tudor Armistice Agreement. The following day, the remains of several individuals thought possibly to be connected to the incidents were discovered outside Wyndham Castle, but not enough clues were ever found to explain the facts of the situation. The truth vanished into the darkness one month later uh, of course is that griffith seems like he has something on his i mean guts has something on his back look like he's returning from somewhere or something looking at his chest plate and his broken sword Casca in a room by herself. Like it's snowing. Yes. Who's that out this late? It's Guts. Guts? So hey, this trick was a work of art. Casca, where are you heading so late? What's the rush? Nice outfit. He did say he was leaving after they... That was his last battle with him. Is he really going to leave? Yes, he's going to leave. <laughs> What's the rush? Bathroom, probably scold after all. Guts. You. She catches up with him. Are you leaving? Is that it? Wait a minute. I was on bad terms with you for a long time, but we're comrades. Who have braved the death together. All the trouble the band of the hawk has gone through is starting to pay off. It all starts here, right? Knowing that at a time like this, I've already made up my mind about it. But, and he says, I can't. I can't remain buried in his dream like this. But, I hope things go well with you and Griffith one second guys bunch of noise coming in it says stuff is going to happen a lot of noisy stuff pipes in the walls and all this other stuff look at that time <laughs> weird stuff but anyways let's continue here I hope things go well with you and Griffith. Quarkus, Judo, 
judo 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 right hey and they're like come talk with us a while so they take guts because because they're like griffith might keep him from leaving so she's she's going back to go get griffith because i don't think he told griffith he was leaving so hey look Adam, it's the Hawk Commanders. Hey, fellas, give it a rest for now, Corcus. Hey, sweet thing. But why, though? I mean, now all of a sudden. And Guts replies, it ain't sudden. I decided before our last dispatch. Are you dissatisfied or something? Hey. Dissatisfied? I've got no reason to be. The Hawks are different from regular bands. They gave me a wandering mercenary. They they gave me a wandering mercenary who knew only how to fight. My first taste of camaraderie. That's not something the old you would have said. These three years really have been fun. It feels like it's been a big festival or something all this time. No way I'm dissatisfied. What is with Quarkus, man? Quarkus, dude, just chill. They're telling you not now when you're here, like, talking to some girls. Like, what's your name? It's Mary. Then why? And so I want to concentrate on this conversation. And Quarkus is just being a jackass right now. So then why in the world? And why in the world? I'm Sir Corcus, unit commander in the band of the Hawk. What's wrong with me trying my hand at a girl or two in a bar? Dude, because... Why are you here? Jesus, man. Any bar or inn in town, you say you're a Hawk commander at any shop in Wyndham and it's a free ride. If you walk down the street, kids and women swarm you and no wonder we're the heroes of the kingdom. To top it off, we're going to be joining the nobles pretty soon. Then it's smooth sailing living in the court. So, so long to those musty barracks. If things go well, we could be castle lords. Normally, we could never have gotten any of this. Commoners like us couldn't even dream of it. But we got it. I can't tell you how many bloodstained memories I have of enemy swords nearly taking my head off with one foot planted in the grave. We finally made it. And you want to go and throw all that away? Just like you were throwing off old clothes? You are unbelievably thick. What are you? What are you? Screwed in the head? And dude says, Quarkus. It's like, ah, he keeps going. A guy like you who only knows how to kill people wouldn't be able to dance with ladies at parties anyways, right? You can swing a sword, but you can't swing a woman, huh? It's like you said. I can't do anything but swing my sword. When I first killed a man, I was a kid who still didn't know right from wrong, right from left. I haven't learned anything off the battlefield since then, and I haven't tried to learn. Killing to survive. There was nothing else I could do. That was everything. But it was all right. If one person, anyone, had looked my way, Had looked my way. It was all right. If one, okay, okay. He is remembering him killing dude from back in the day, but wandering the battlefields made me realize that wouldn't do me any good in trying to survive. It was just something of a childish complaint. Even so, incidentally, I found someone I really wanted. To have looked at me. He didn't have anything, yet he was trying to take hold of everything. No, something about him made you think it could happen. But in order for him to aim so high, he has to always hone himself to the very limit. That's why there's no room at his side for the weak. But strangely, the more clear that becomes, the more dazzling he is in my eyes. 
And I've had enough looking up at him from inside his dream. I want to stand beside him by attaining something of my own. He's the only one I can't stand looking down on me. To hear Guts talk, like, talking like this, and it's like now he kind of like, he wants to stand beside him. He doesn't want to be his, you know, quote unquote, second in command. He doesn't, he want to, he, Griffith made him believe that, you know, he, because Griffith achieved that stuff, he feels like he can go out and do that stuff on his own. So he wants to be on that level too, where have a dream, go get it start something of his own and achieve some goals of his own, which is not wrong of him to do. It's something that I advise everybody to do. If you know, if you have mentorship, make sure that as you go through that mentorship, make sure that you're taking those things that you're being taught and applying it to yourself so that you can be in that place where you'll be able to mentor other people. Cause it's not about, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to, keep passing it on, pay it forward. That's the true essence of leadership is to pay it forward. You learn from someone, then you teach. That is the order of things. So I love that concept. I love what he's dreaming about right now. So he says, I want to stand beside him by attaining something of my own. He's the only one I can stand looking down on me. The morning departure chapter one stand beside griffith huh. you can't be serious that's something a kid would say don't you this is corcus again talking don't you get it he's special he's different from us all you know how to do is kill and you're captain of the hawks raiders a position you don't what bruh sit your ass down please please sit down don't deserve all that's possible because you met Griffith, please. People like that who are like, you know, the dick writers, I, I can't stand them. You know what I'm saying? The dick writers, like them who don't have nothing on their own. They, they just riding on people's coattails coat for the rest of their life and they don't want to achieve anything. They just want to ride on that person's success. So if something happens to them, guess what? You're, you're basically just out there like in... in in limbo floating because now you don't know what to do because you don't have no dreams of your own you know what i'm saying so um okay so um so god says i'm not interested in stuff like glass class or rank what i want is something else something i can win for myself that's why you sound like a brat says corcus Something you can win for yourself? Huh. If something like that were easy to find, no one would ever have to suffer. Even if you're lucky enough to find it, only a small handful of people get to be winners. Normal people use their own strength and talents to come to terms with their real lives and make do the best they can. There's plenty out there who say all you need is a dream. It makes me sick to look at assholes like that. All you need is a dream? Huh? That's something weaklings who can't face the truth say. An unrealized dreams, just an unrealized dream is just a load of crap straight out of the horse's mouth. Like you mean? And guts ask him, you you don't have something like that? The hell with this, judo, judo, I. I'm done for the night. I can't stand to hang with the big baby anymore. Commander, your bill. And he's like, put it on my tab. In spite of all that, he used to lead he used to lead a band of thieves. Well, it was only about ten men, and times were tough. They crossed the band of the hawk and sure enough got put in their place. Ever since then, He's been one of ours. This is Jado talking. While no big deal. Maybe there was something he too wanted to win for himself. As for me, 
I've always been a jack of all trades. I'm better than average with swords and knives. And without boasting, I have a pretty quick wit too. But I've never been the best at anything. That's why I decided if I couldn't be the best, I'd fly in the wake of the one who seems the best. There's nobody who never wanted something. Don't get me wrong though, I'm pretty happy with things. Well, from one's perspective, oh, I'm pretty happy with things and my own situation. Well, from one perspective, that's not all true. To sacrifice your status as captain of the Raiders and the promise of peerage and knighthood dangling before your eyes all for some vague thing, I wonder if something is wrong. But maybe there's something wrong with all men. Dreams. Win or lose, I'm sure you could spend your whole life chasing one. That day, three years ago, I said you'd find a place to belong here. I guess I was wrong. I'll see you off. I hope you find it. You're something. Okay, that's cool. Jado you know, is a cool dude, man. Like I like his character. He got his positive attitude about him that I really like. So, hey, I do want to ask you one thing, eh? What's up with you and Casca? What's that? <laughs> Gus is like, what's that supposed to mean? Yeah, now you're going to play coy? <laughs> He's like, ever since you two fell off that cliff, it's like you've gotten a lot closer. He's like, you really think so? He said, well, a lot's happened with her. <laughs> you know, is looking because you know a lot of times people will see things that you you know that you don't want them to see and then you're going to try to play it off like you know like it didn't happen you know so he's asked those like what's that look for <laughs> it's like why not try your luck with her she i'm rooting for them too bro it's like huh hold up that was random what made you say that Every old dog in the hawk knows that. She and Griffith. She? Casca? Can't be with Griffith. Chances are. Hmm? Like you said, Griffith rose up from having nothing to be a top general of Midland. That's practically a miracle itself. Ordinarily, you'd throw your hands up and celebrate without hoping for anything more. But he won't stop. The goal he pursues is one of a kind. They say the kingdom probably won't see war for some time. In that case, even Griffith won't have any opportunities to shine militarily. His chances for promotion will be slim. Even if he's a general, he's still a soldier after all. There's nothing beyond that. He'll need a trump card for one last push. Don't you get it? And... Even before I turn the page, I know what he's going to say. And I've been saying this in previous volumes that I did that ultimately, if you want that status, he has to marry Char Charlotte. He has to he has to find a way to get in with Charlotte because that's going to put him in. He, he's going to be a prince, not just a general, but he's going to be a prince now. So I'm pretty sure that's what Jado is going to say. I'm, I don't even have to ask. I know that's what he's going to say. If it's not that, I'll be surprised if that's not what he's going to say. What did I say, man? What did I say, bro? Did, it's, it, it's the next step. It has to be the next step. It's nothing else. Right? So Griffith is now the White Phoenix General, Midland's heroic savior. Right? And he's talking about it. It's like, it's the princess. Catching Princess Charlotte is the fastest shortcut to Griffith's ambition. It's also the only way. It's it's a sure way for him to get the kingdom he wants. And you know what I'm saying? So all he has to do, marry Charlotte, kill the king. Done deal. <laughs> marry Charlotte, kill the king. He got his kingdom. That's it. Okay, so beside even her highness, he'd appear quite a worthy companion. As faith would have it, General Julius, next in line to the throne, after her highness, and his son, Adonis, who was likely to marry her, are now dead by the hands of another. There's nobody left. That's the, that's the play. Marry Charlotte, 
kill the king. He becomes king automatically, right? He becomes king automatically because of that. So, I know, okay. So, what's more, the queen, well known within the court for her severity and several conservative ministers were mysteriously burned to death on the night of the assassination attempt on Griffith. Thanks to that, the military award ceremony is still postponed. Guts, you... No. Oh, well. Guts, don't tell the others about this. It's not that I don't trust them. The Hawks are bound. So he's remembering when he was talking with Griffith that, that, that night. Uh, so he's telling him not to tell. So Griffith was telling him to not tell the others about the plan or what happened that night. So he's like, it's not that I don't trust them. The Hawks are bound by one fate after all. But I don't want to reveal to them my dirty side. They need only feel as though we're rising up. Let me lubricate the throat. Okay. You're rough enough to share this with um, to the end. In any case, this means those who interfere with Griffith's ambition are all dead. Right? This is Judo talking again. The princess, she's in love with him. Well, that's probably by his design anyway. There's no way he'll miss this chance. As for Casca, Griffith is truly special. It goes beyond any feelings for him. He rescued her from despair and gave her a new life. So, it's more than love she feels for him. It's more like worship. That's kind of true. I wouldn't go as far as to say worship, though, but I can see where he's coming from and why he's described as a little more than love. Um, it's kind of like an attachment, an obsession in certain ways um, because, she res because he rescued her. So... Yet, despite all her efforts, can she find happiness? Being a woman longing for a man she can't ever have. If she loves him, shouldn't she want to be held by him? Like, moreover, beside him is the woman he can't afford to refuse in fulfilling his dream. That woman can grant him the thing he most desires, the one thing Casca herself definitely can't offer him. That must be unbearable, dealing with that. So, what about Casca? Ever think you'd like to hold her? Of course, bruh. So he's like hesitating and stuff. He's like, she's a fine woman. She's a lot better than those noble girls who only know how to dress up. It's hard to find a woman you can trust to watch your back on the battlefield. But... Less a woman I see her as less a woman I see her as a comrade. So Judo is like so it's like no, that's not it. The one who as her I is Griffith. That's why right now I'm no good for her like this. Well, at least he's humble about it. So he's like, gotcha. It really seemed there was hope for you, though. For now, my hands are full with, full with just me. This is far enough. <laughs> ah, they're trying to stop him. <laughs> so Casca and all of them is out here. Corka showed up too? Griffith must be here. Says like, you guys. Leaving without saying anything? How could you, Guts? Why? Don't you like the band of the Hawks? This is Rickert talking. And Casca is like, Casca is sad as hell. Because cause she wants him to stay, but she I don't think she wants to say what she wants to say, but let, let's see what happens. So Griffith is here, of course, because she went to go get Griffith. So Griffith is here. 
The Morning Departure. Chapter 2. So they're both looking at each other. It says, are you leaving? He's like, yeah. You mean to quit? The Band of the Hawk? I wonder if he's going to be like, the only way out is death. <laughs> no. This is not the mob, sir. <laughs> and so he's like, I'm sorry. Rickard says, that doesn't explain anything. Tell us why. Aren't you the Hawks? Aren't the Hawks just like family to you, Guts? Why would you throw that away? Jado is like, cut it out. It's a man's decision. Hush and let him go. But, but no. This is bad for all of us, right? Guts is the Raiders' captain. He's vital. We can't let him leave. He, uh, of course, Corcus is going to say something. He's like, <laughs> we were invincible before he joined. He ain't the only reason the Hawks got so strong. Yeah. But, he's like, shut up, you. Hey, since it's come to this, listen up. Says Quarkus talking now. I always hated you, pal. That's not a secret, man. I don't know why you're talking about that like it's some sort of secret. We all know you don't like guts. Is that from the start? To be honest, I aim my bowgun at your back more than just once or twice in battle. Damn. Now I finally see why. You piss me off so much it's that face that stone cold intense scowling mug gets under my skin like nothing else that face like you're in some kind of agony or something like you're the only one walking some path of profound suffering that no one understands like you're the only one who's special don't be so proud i don't bite you ain't special you can never become griffith and everybody is like looking around. He's like, "Huh. Now that you're no longer one of the Hawks, if we meet again on some battlefield, you better make sure you watch your back." And like that. And he turns away. Thanks for everything. Casca. Can't be with Griffith. Chances are, why not try your luck with her? Ever think you'd like to hold her? Of course, man. Of course, man. Like he's thinking about that junk. What Jado said. And then he walks right past her. Okay, who is this with his sword out right now? Somebody pulled their sword. Is it Griffith? Whoa. Griffith pulls out the sword. And they're like, Griffith. And he's like, I thought I told you then that you belong to me. I won you with this. Your fight and your death, I owed both. If you want to leave my grasp, then it'll be the same as that time. Rest yourself away by your sword. Damn. And he's like, Griffith. Guess we can't just smile and say, take care. And he's like, you're really serious. <laughs> Guts drops his bag and pulls out his sword. So here we go. Griffith versus Guts part two. Let's do it. And Casca is like, wait, are you too serious? Comrades are going to cross cross swords. Griffith, if you sheath your sword, we can talk. And Guts pushes her out of the way and told, tells her to get back. Don't get in our way. And Casca's like, what are you saying? If you really do this, both of you... Uh, so Pippin pulls her out of the way. They said they have to do. They have to do this now. Serves him right. Says Corcus. Of course, it's like what's wrong with all of you? 
this is a sword fight. If we don't stop them, and they're like, this is their business. It's not for us to interfere. But what are we going to do without swords and do without swords anyway? Did you forget living luxuriously among the regular army? What's taken by the sword must be recovered by it. That's the mercenaries. Our ironclad rule, isn't it? That's been our way since even before coming to Midland. I can respect it. Okay, so mercenaries have their own way of doing things. And you know that's true. Yeah, but she's changed too. It's like Judo is like reading her. It's like she's changed too, man. Yeah. So they're like, okay. The old Casca would have never cared even if it came down to comrades getting hurt. I bet she wouldn't even have faltered at losing her own life if it had been Griffith's will. To Casca, his word was gospel. Maybe that's still the truth. Is, is she herself even aware that she's begun to change? I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, so they're still pointing their swords at each other. You look like you're staring down an enemy makes down an enemy. Makes sense. Your expectations, your confidence in me as your soldier is vanishing into thin air. So I can't complain if you resent me. But still, even if I'm hated or treated like a traitor, someone who would never depend upon another's dream, someone who wouldn't be compelled by anyone, but would determine and pursue his own reason to live. So that's why. So that's why. Um, so that's why, oh, I guess. And should anyone trample that dream, you would oppose him body and soul, even if the threat were me, myself. What I think a friend is, is that one who is my equal. That's why I have to go. Maybe losing an arm will wake his ass up, <laughs> says Corcus, of course. Will it be that simple? These past three years, Guts has cut his own path through the battlefield as captain of the Raiders. He's exposed himself to danger more than anyone else in the Band of the Hawk. Griffith is certainly a genius when it comes to sword technique. I don't know what is this thing hanging off of him. It looks like a devil's tail. I don't know what. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just. Maybe it's something that he has on him that I don't know about. But gut skills have been so well honed on the line between life and death that you could say his is a sort of carnage. Sure enough, Griffith's face looks lacks its usual composure. Their strength is equally matched. Okay, so the morning departure, chapter three. I think this is the last chapter, guys, for this read through. So hang on, this is, I'm, uh, I'm going to wrap this up <laughs> in a sec. I think this is the last chapter in the volume. I have realized we got through it pretty quickly, but let's do this. It's odd. I'm feeling strangely calm. Yet I'm up against Griffith. So there's no way I can drop my guard. Three years ago that day was like this one. It all started with a duel. Now it ends with one fine by me. It's much more fitting than some half-hearted farewell. This says to me, I'm still worth spilling blood over in your eyes. And Kosk is like, Guts is strong. He's become much stronger these past three years. Unfathomable. Unfa unfathomably. Okay? But then, even so, it's Griffith. Griffith can, I'm sure Griffith can stop him. Yes. Then everything will stay as it has, it has been. Is that my wish? Do I want, do I want him to stay? Yes, you do. I can't sense your typical brazen fight in spirit. Your eyes remain calm, and yet they're poised, devoid of precariousness. So that's how firm you are in your resolve. Do you want to go? Is this how badly you want to leave my grasp? 
You can't. You can't. I won't have it. I won't let you. That's Griffith talking. But what do I do? His speed and power are nothing like they used to be. I'm not sure I can parry his attack anymore. And all this snow, if I can, my sword still won't last past two or three strikes, might hinder my movements. Victory must come in the first strike. Really? Are you trying to one hit a quitter? <laughs> you... <laughs> That's not going to happen with Gus, man. The instant his blade falls, I'll deflect it and slice into the top of his shoulder. My speed and timing can't be off. Even slightly, it's a strike I won't be able to constrain. There's no other technique I can use to beat him now. If successful, even Guts wouldn't escape unarmed. No. If in the instance our swords meet, the pressure from the altars, the arc of mine, even just a little, I might really kill him. Even then, if I can't have him. Okay, so he's thinking out the battle. Are they finally lunging? He's like, I don't care. So he lunges. And the first strike comes. He's like, so suddenly. It's like, good. He gets what he wants. The first clash. Is he going to parry and get the shoulder? Deflect it and... ho! Oh! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because it looks like Griffith is about... It looks like Guts is about to kill him. He breaks Griffith's sword like it's nothing, dude. He breaks his sword. What's going to happen? He's going to stop himself. He's going to stop himself. Oh, man. Bruh, you are so lucky. He drops his sword... And they're like, Griffith is like, you lost, buddy. <laughs> we ain't equals with this sword shit no more, okay? So he drops his, the rest of his sword. I don't know. I'm out here, like, moving my screen around. Like, you know what I'm saying? I hate OBS sometimes. I don't even know when I moved my mouse over here. When did I move my mouse over here? Crazy, man. Anyways, yeah, so Griffith is like, take care. Like, take care. And he walks away. Whew, I know Griffith don't want to lose him, man, but he walks away. He's like, Griffith, she doesn't know what to do with herself right now. That's the thing. She doesn't know what to say to him. She says, Go guts you know oh she cries out she's like guts did it stop him no he didn't stop guts really did they like guts really left us without even looking back it's a fluke it had to be damn it i won't accept this dude Stop it, Corkers. You know, like, and then that's a nice image right there. It's like, it's all right. It's like stumbling on a rock on the roadside. It's petty, a small thing. The place you want to go is more distant, farther off. So it's all right. You'll stand up. And you start walking. It's so funny that it's so funny that the same thing that come right back around full circle, the same thing that Griffith was talking about when he when he killed or when he poked dude in the eye, you know, where he was saying that it's just like a rock. He was just like a pebble in the road of his path. He just passed by. You know what I'm saying? on the road to where he really wants to go and now um and, and and now what's his name guts and now guts is basically referring to himself as the same thing for griffith and i think it i think it meant more than that i think with grid griffith the thing the thing about griffith and 
Guts's relationship. I like like it's a very genuine relationship, and I think I, I'm not gonna say Griffin lost on purpose. He obviously is outclassed. He, he broke his sword. You know what I'm saying? Um, in one slash, he lost. He lost. He didn't. He didn't lose on purpose. He lost that fight. You know what I'm saying? So, him feeling embarrassed because maybe it happened in front of you know some of the commanders or whatever, and in front of Casca. I don't know if you know. That's why guts is like you'll recover from this. You know what I mean? So don't worry about it. So. And thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. It's been great. I'm going to go do the review. So if you're watching this over on the Google Drive, okay, make sure you go back to YouTube and check out my review, man, of these 10 beautiful chapters of Berserk. I liked it from start to end. Um, as I said before, man, if I'm enjoying it, if I'm enjoying the dialogue and anything, there was a lot of dialogue in these 10 chapters. Um, basically, you know, the, the conclusion of the battle and then what transpires after the battle. I will be talking all about that. So if you want to know my thoughts, make sure you go back and check out the review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. If you're checking this out on Patreon three days earlier than it's being released on YouTube, man. Thank you guys so much for the donations, for the continued support over both on the Patreon and also on the YouTube channel, man. You guys are the best. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys next time. For some more, make sure you go back and check out the review on YouTube. All right, so here we are. Here we are. Here we go. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. That was basically, I think, I think it was the most, the heaviest of dialogues we've had. The th things that has trans transpired moving the story along, the death of the queen. Griffith okie doking everybody making them think that he's dead um, sending guts to take out the people the loose ends and stuff like that but I really you know I'm, I'm gonna go down like I understand like I just read it so I understand what's taking place but I do want to touch on some very important point of views that I have when it comes on so I want to talk about um, two relationships the relationship between these three like I want to say major characters in the story right now right I want to talk about that but I also also want to you know the the rundown of what I, you know what I think is going to happen next before I jump into that so when it comes on to what took place in these in these 10 chapters right where you talk about your how they won the battle you know what I mean? Um, Nos Nosferatu showing up, throwing that sword to guts. What does that mean? He did say something about, um, you know, uh, the demon the war or something. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he's, he said something that has you thinking now. So we're expecting something demonic to happen. Maybe a war on a grand scale or them coming to the to, to their realm or something of the source. But why did he help Guts? Like that's the question I have going forward about that. Why did he show up on that battlefield? Why is he so interested in Guts? I mean he did speak a prophecy about him. Um maybe he's supposed to be there. I don't know, but that was great because he maybe he's not supposed to die there, and Nesferatu knows that, so he went there to help. Um, so there's things coming up that I'm definitely going to be looking forward to. He did leave the sword; he didn't bring it with him. Um, yeah, so they left the castle, they went home, so they're scheduled to become noblemen and stuff like that. All the commanders, um, plus Griffith, is going to become. Um, a a nobleman. He's gonna be like the the new commander or whatever. The general. Um, he's gonna get that um, promotion again, another promotion. So the next step for him is basically from sh um to marry Charlotte, because now the queen is dead because they they you know him and them and Minister Foss that devised the plan that Griffith found out about. Well, not necessarily found out about because he never really knew. He just guessed. He's like, this guy, you know what I'm saying? His look gave him away. His fear of him gave him away. So I'm just going to wing it and see what happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he just basically just sent him a unanimous letter saying, I know what you're planning. Okay? 
So you better let me in and I'll spare your life. I got your daughter. Okay. So that's how that went down. Um, and now basically it's a good idea to have, I'm not against it. When it, when it comes to minister Foss, I'm not against him working with him because now he, he has let him know, listen, I can read you, dude. So I have you on lot. Now you are mine. You belong to me now. You know what I'm saying? I own you. So, um, good way to, to kind of tell that story. I like the fact that they made us think, even though I wasn't like from the minute he got the letter and I saw him sweating, I knew something was going on. Um, and then it was revealed. And I'm glad that the queen and all them dudes that were against him is dead. Well, not everybody that's against him is dead. But at the same time, now we knew that Guts was leaving and now he's gone. What is going to take place now? Casca wanting, wanting, wanting to tell him how she feels. Because I don't, I think she's really like confused. She's confused about who she likes most. And I think, I think Guts has the upper edge, but it's kind of like she's conflicted in a way that she can't really decide if she really, really does like him. She can't decide because between her and Griffith, um, relationship that she has with Griffith is like, you know, and, and this is very typical of women. Very, it's a very typical thing. It's not strange. I've seen it plenty of times where the girl is chasing someone that don't, not really paying them no attention. And the guy that, you know what I'm saying, that would bring her the moon if they could, they ignore them. You know what I'm saying? And I never understood that. I've never understood that. You know, I've written stuff about stuff like this. I've talked about it plenty of times. And I just, I can never understand why women do that. And it's very typical of them to chase what they can't have. It's, it's, it's weird. Somebody will chase, a guy will be like, um, doing everything they can to make you notice them and they will never notice the guy. Like you will be completely oblivious to it. Sometimes it happens to guys too, but not as much as it happens to women. You know what I'm saying? So, um, truth be told, I love how they're portraying the relationships. These relationship between these three characters is very confusing with Casca being in the middle guts kind of like walking away from the situation which is something that you know a lot of guys do in real life too they walk away from those situations because um not not talking about the band of the hawk right now i'm talking about him walking away from Casca crying out to him or calling his name you know what i'm saying and just keep walking because a lot of times you're so hurt by the situation or by the person that you just can't deal with them you know what i'm saying like no matter what, I'm always going to have that inkling in the back of my head that you like this nigga more than you like me. So why should I stick around? You get what I'm saying? So that could play a part in why Guts just is leaving too. You know what I'm saying? Um, him leaving Griffith and leaving the band of the Hawk was, I understand his reason profoundly. I understand where he's coming from. You don't want to, you, you really don't want to be chasing some dude for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to be helping someone to achieve their dream dreams while you know what I'm saying? While you are being left behind. He thinks he's helped Griffith enough for him to be able to walk away and go pursue his own dreams. And I totally agree with that. I'm a hundred percent. I'll tell you that every time learn and then go pay it forward. Don't learn forever. You should always be, a student to everything, but you need to be able to become a leader. Also, you need to be able to become that leader that, um, that you learn from somebody else how to be a leader and then go be a leader off your own. And we can talk about it because I've seen it plenty of times how this play out in different animes, in different mangas that I've read. I see it very profoundly. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I like to use Naruto as an example because I it's probably the only anime and manga that I know from top to bottom. You know what I'm saying? Because I watch it so damn much. When it comes on to the, the situation with Naruto, you know, he had to step out of that childish way. And I think he really became 
so much more mature um, after, you know what I'm saying, during the pain arc. The pain arc is when you really saw Naruto really stepped up and become way more mature than how he used to be. And you saw little in inclinations of it at leading up to the arc, leading up to it. I mean, the first time he used the Rasen Shuriken, all this good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You kind of see that he's trying to mature, that he's trying to become better, more of a leader and less of a, you know what I'm saying, a student, right? Because Jiraiya died. He had to grow up. He had to, to to step out of the shadows and now become the light. You know what I'm saying? So that people can look up to him. I mean, the only person that was really looking up to Naruto up until that point was Konohamaru. It wasn't anybody else. Yes, they probably heard of a lot of stuff that Naruto was doing, even from part one, leading up to that moment. But it wasn't anybody that was like, yo... They got to give this guy props or whatever. There wasn't anyone. It was like, oh, they know Naruto. You know, they've always said, oh, this and that. But we still are kind of better. You know what I'm saying? Like, people will give him props, but they didn't look to him as a leader. You know what I'm saying? Because even during the pain arc when Shikamaru was trying to get back to him and his father had to look at him and tell him, he's like, dude, if he's learned sage mode, if he's learned sage jutsu, He's in a whole new class by himself now. He don't need your help, homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so that's why it was really great to see the first really great acknowledgement by the village and everyone of Naruto after that arc when they came to greet him and they were throwing him in the air. Eventually, you have to step out and become a leader. And it has to it has to be um acknowledgement as that leader too so there's that also so i definitely dig it man i like the fact that he's leaving um it's heart-wrenching to say the least because i would have loved to see him or Casca go with him or he stays just for Casca's sake because I, I love a good romance story you know what I'm saying and their relationship has been really good over the past couple of volumes so I really was rooting him I officially shipped them in this volume to be honest so to see him still deciding to leave um and I'm glad that Judo kind of called him out and be like hey bro so you're not you're not gonna say nothing about Casca you guys are really close like you're just gonna walk away from that too and sometimes you just have to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, in the future, they're going to get back together somehow because that relationship, that chemistry was built for a reason. And in stories, you can't just build a chemistry like that and then leave it out. I watch so many different TV shows and all this other stuff. And I see, I can pick up on that stuff from if it happens in like episode when I was like, these two are going to be a focus in the story as a relationship um, couple because you can see their chemistry on screen and where they're leading it to it could be that is you know you're going to experience multiple breakups but at the same time they're still going to be together right so you can pick up on that stuff based on if you have experience in writing anything or stuff like that writing stories understanding that stuff so i definitely have to say man this volume was was great not my favorite but it was great nonetheless. Lots of dialogue to read through, man. I almost lost my voice, to be honest. You can see that my voice is totally different from when I started. You can hear a little coarseness in my voice now, right? Because as I said, man, I talk for a living. And it's tough sometimes to sit here and do this. But if it's exciting enough, I'll get through it. I love to read dialogue. Hope you guys are enjoying it too. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. This has been one of those good, really good dialogue read-throughs. The bat There was no real battles um you know what i'm saying like the the battle over when at the beginning was pretty much done it was very exciting to see my boy nesferatu again i love to see him um he is a oh, i don't want to say he, he's like an anti-hero right now because he's beastly he's the only one that has bested guts so far so that's why he's so interesting to me so um but yeah man we're gonna continue um, hopefully next week I can do, I can do another volume for you guys, man. It's tough to, to carve out two, two to three hours to do these read throughs, man. It's, it's tough. So I thank you guys so much for supporting, man. It's awesome. And I will see you guys next time. Just remember to leave a like, leave a comment in the comment section, man. I want to see a ton of comments, man. 
I want to see a ton of comments, bro. Like, I know it's probably around 100 to 200 of you guys that tune in to watch this. So I know you guys can leave more comments, man. Leave a comment in the, re in, in the comment section, man. Leave a like and also subscribe if you're new. There's more Berserk to come. Hopefully, you guys are check out, checking out the Ippo read-throughs on the channel. We have continued to do the continued from where the anime left off and we just saw we we just got through a a fight um in it don't want to spoil it you can go see it for yourself if you haven't been reading the manga or never read it so great stuff great stuff so i'll see you guys later man terabyte out i'll see you guys for the next one peace